If you're going to drill into brick or concrete, you're going to need a drill with a hammer action on it. And although both of these drills have hammer actions, they work in totally different ways. So if you're going to drill into something hard, you can forget about using something like this. And it's got nothing to do with the weight of the drill. Let me show you why. Where's my poor drill? Everyone knows that to drill into brick or concrete, you just can't use a standard drill. Firstly, you need a masonry bit that looks a little bit like that, that has a wide cutting bit at the top and then a narrower shaft to allow the dust to come out. And secondly, you need a drill that has a hammer action. Now, most drills these days, all but the really cheapest ones, generally have hammer actions on them. And you'll see it marked on the clutch as a little hammer. So I've got my drill, I've got my drill bit, job done. Well, not quite so quick. You see, concrete, brick and block all come in different strengths, from quite soft to incredibly hard as well. So just because you've got a drill that has a hammer action on it and you've got the right drill bit, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get through that material. It depends a lot more on the strength of that material and what type of hammer action your drill is using. Into soft brick and concrete, a cordless drill like this would definitely work if used with a reasonably new drill bit. I've done this a number of times around my house as the outer layer of block work behind this render is relatively soft and drills without a problem. But there's many places where things get a little bit more difficult. You see, if you've got concrete, concrete gains strength over time. So if you've got old concrete or concrete with a high cement content, it can be incredibly hard, as hard as granite, and very difficult to drill into. And if you live in a house where you don't think you've got any concrete, then unfortunately there's a good chance you're wrong. And it's normally exactly where you want to drill. You see, many properties over the years have been constructed with concrete lintels above windows and openings to support the brickwork and blockwork above, similar to what I did in the garage when I made the opening for the new workshop. However, these are not normally exposed because they're covered in plaster. So most people don't know they're there until they try to put up a set of heavy curtains and then... Only then they find out they're drilling into solid concrete and find that a drill like this just won't be able to cope. I didn't actually drill that, that was just a sound effect. So why don't hammer drills like this work very well on very hard material? Well, you see the hammer action actually comes from a special mechanism inside this clutch. And how do I put it? It's more vibration than percussive. You see, this doesn't really move in and out very much. And when you're using this on really hard material, it might make a lot of vibration and a lot of noise, but it's not hitting the material hard enough to really cause hard material much damage. Let me show you. So, noise-wise, that was pretty painful. Extremely high vibration an extremely ear piercing noise. So I definitely had to have the ear protectors on. And I've stopped there because I know that very quickly this is gonna go blunt. I've only drilled about half an inch deep, but I know that there's so much heat going into this drill bit now that very quickly that's gonna heat up to the point where it goes blunt. You see, it's heat generated in a drill bit that makes them go blunt very quickly. And unfortunately, what most people do when it's not drilling is that they push harder and they keep at it longer and that only adds heat into a drill bit and makes it even more blunt so it's a sort of vicious circle. So if you ever come across people that say I've only ever got one or two holes out of my drill bits that's probably because they're staying with the power too long they're drilling too fast and they're basically just wearing them out within just a few seconds. So if a drill like this doesn't work very well, then what's the alternative? Well, it's something like this. This is an SDS rotary hammer action drill. 
but instead of using a clutch to put percussion into the drill bit, it actually uses a piston mechanism to deliver a much more powerful blow to the concrete or brick. This system is called SDS, which stands for Slotted Drive System or Slotted Drive Shaft, and it uses bits like these that have slots in the side that clamp onto the clutch. This holds the drill bit straight and actually turns it as well. And if we just feed it into the clutch here, you'll see that it actually is allowed to move in and out. And it's allowed to move quite a lot actually. It's probably up to just over half an inch maybe. But the power really comes from a piston in the middle of here that actually hits the end of the drill bit and forces it forward and makes it gives it that percussive action. And actually, if you look at the end of the drill bit, you can see the mark that it's actually made as this hits the end of the drill. It's very similar to me hitting a drill and twisting it at the same time. So compared to a standard hammer action drill, this is a lot more efficient and does a lot more damage because of this percussive action that really hurts the brick or the concrete exactly where you want it to be. And because of that as well, the actual rotation isn't doing as much as it would do on a standard drill. So the rotation is a lot slower, which means that the build-up of heat is a lot less, which means that these bits tend to last a lot longer as well. The standard masonry bits, I would call them disposable, but any SGS drill bits like this are going to last you an awful long time. So let's see how this one drills. Well, that was completely different. It was a lot quieter, a lot more controlled. The rotation was a lot slower, which also means that it didn't heat up nearly as much and therefore this isn't going to wear out nearly as quick as well. This is the same size drill bit that I was using just now in the DeWalt drill, six millimeter drill bit. And really, if you're then going to be using bigger drill bits, you've got to be using an SDS drill, especially when you're getting up to sizes like this, this is 22 millimeters. You really do need to use an SDS drill. And the other little trick an SDS drill like this has up its sleeve is because the rotation and the percussion are fed to the drill bit in two different ways, either of them can be turned off individually. So if you turn off the percussion and just have the rotation, it turns into a standard drill. In fact, this one comes with a standard chuck as well that has an SDS fit in here and just has a standard chuck, which means that you can put in normal drill bits and use this as a drill. Similarly, if you turn off the rotation and turn on the hammer section, then this turns into what we'd call on site a chipping hammer or a very light breaker. And all you have to do is put in a chisel like this at the end. You've got no rotation. You've only got the percussion. And then suddenly with this, you can start breaking out brickwork and concrete like you would have seen me do around the house numerous times. I've used this on my footpaths to break out concrete. I also use it on the demolition of my wall to make an entrance into the garage and breaking out foundations to some of my fencing as well. Now don't get me wrong, if you've got a concrete drive to break up that's eight inches thick, this is never gonna do that job. It's just too much for it to handle. But where this really comes into its own is thinner concrete, brickwork, plaster, render, and it's a really handy tool to have in your arsenal. Which brings me on to, why does a DIYer need an SDS drill? Well, I held off from buying an SDS drill for many, many years, and I struggled by hand removing plaster and brickwork and concrete, some of which almost killed me. Now in hindsight, what I should have done is I should have got one of these years ago. It's one of these tools that when you do have them, you use them more than you think you were going to because they're there and they're available. If you've been watching my videos recently, you would see that every month or two, this comes out of the box. And when it does, I'm really glad to have it. Now this particular model is a Titan 631, which is 6.3 kilograms in weight, so it's not a light tool. 
It has 1500 watts of power, which I found to be plenty, and comes with 22 accessories in the form of bits and chisels, all for less than £80, which I think is a really good deal. This gives me near enough all the bits I'll ever need, including chisels of different shapes and five titanium nitride coated bits, which are supposed to be even harder. I'm not sure if they're any harder, but in the gold, I must say, they do look pretty cool. And as I said earlier, because these tend to stay sharper for longer, I'm intending to use all these drill bits for at least the life of this drill, maybe beyond that as well. So if you're going to invest in an SDS drill, whether you go for a cheaper version like this or an all singing, all dancing, cordless, top of the range version, make sure it's got a rotary lock on. Most of them do but not all of them. It would be a shame to buy one of these and not have that feature where you can actually chip away from concrete and brickwork as well. So that's my complete guide to SDS rotary hammer drills. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe and hit that notification bell. So till next time I have that urge to go and break some concrete.